Today we're going to talk about how to make slabs for our slab mug project. What you're going to need to do this assignment is the following. Your two paint sticks that have been taped together. Remember, in each stack you want three paint sticks tightly taped together. Okay, And you're going to um, place them about six to eight inches apart would be ideal. Um, you are going to need something to roll your clay on. I'm using this tablecloth piece. You could use a piece of newspaper, a, um, an old t-shirt, um, a cardboard box, you know, the back of a cer an old cereal box kind of torn open could work as well. Um, if you have an old table, you could use that, but it might stick a little bit. You're going to need your rolling pin that I provided you with. So um, this may come in the form of a plastic tube. It might be a piece of cardboard, a round cylinder. If, the, um, if you don't have that or you feel you need something bigger, you can certainly use um, any kind of cylindrical container. You could use a glass, um, you know, a travel mug if it's a nice straight kind of shape like this could also be used. You could purchase an inexpensive um, rolling pin at the dollar store. You can also use a piece of dowel, which is just a long piece of wood. But hopefully what I've provided you with will be uh, long enough for your piece. You just want to make sure that your um, rolling pin that you've made goes slightly over your sticks so that it helps to create consistent um, thickness. So it should hit the sticks as you roll it. The other thing that you are going to need is um, something to cut with. So um, your bamboo skewer should be um, adequate for that, but you could also use um, a butter knife, um, an X-Acto knife, that kind of thing. You will also need your template that you have created. Just a reminder, um, the base piece is three inches wide in diameter, which is a little bit bigger than a um, condensed soup but a little bit smaller than like a can of tuna. Um, so you could certainly trace those to help you get that shape. So kind of go somewhere in between. And then you have your um, flexible cardboard or paper that is 10 inches long by four and a half inches tall. Okay. Um, and again, this is flexible and this is called a template. It's going to help me get a really nice clean shape. I have my clay, which I have put into a towel because it was getting a bit dry. So I'm going to start rolling that out. So I'm going to place my rulers here and get my clay out. I have previously wedged this clay and then placed it into um, a towel just to keep it nice and wet. Um, if you do have it in a towel, you'll want to rinse this towel out and place it, you know, somewhere, um, you know, you can hang it in your shower or hang it outside, although it's freezing out right now, um, just to wash it out. And, um, you know, don't keep it in a bag of clay because it will get kind of funky. So when I'm preparing this clay to be rolled out, what I want to do is um, kind of pound it with my hand to get a long kind of flat shape, almost like a brick shape. You want to um, have to do the least amount of rolling as possible because you're not using a real rolling pin here. And I'm pounding it with my fist to kind of flatten it out a little bit further. All right, so I have pounded my clay out with my hands. Um, I really um, did a lot of pushing the clay on its side like this to get it a narrow, long piece. Um, I started out with quite a bit of clay. Um, at least like a softball size piece, so quite a bit more than you would need for the pinch pot. It's better to um, use more than you think you need because you can always cut it down, but you can't add to this once you start rolling it out. 
So once I've gotten the shape kind of long and thin and almost close to the size of my template, so hold up your template. That's about how much clay you're going to need. You're going to need a little bit um, thicker, and then you're going to roll it out. So it'll end up, you won't use, I'm not going to use this whole piece. I can already hold this up and see that this is longer than it needs to be. So just to make the rolling a little bit easier, I'm going to cut some of this off. All right, so right now this chunk is very thick, right? And I it's very uneven, so I want to roll it nice and even. So I'm going to put my two rulers, um, like I said, about six inches apart. My rolling little rolling pin should hit on top of the rulers. And this is much easier to do when we are in school and we have actual rolling pins, but we're going to do the best we can. And again, if you're struggling here, you could try to use a different device, such as um, a drinking glass. I wouldn't use a wooden rolling pin that you bake for it with because you're going to get that clay all over it. And, you know, wood is more porous than other things. And it may not really be the safest thing to do. Okay, so I'm rolling this out. And the way I know that I've gone thin enough is that my rolling pin will hit the wood pieces and it won't be able to push the clay any thinner. If you are finding this to be difficult, another technique that you can use is called throwing a slab. Um, so what I'm going to do to throw, I'll just show you how to throw a slab. This is a little bit, uh, it takes a little bit more practice and it's harder to get it even if you don't have practice, but you might find you like this technique. So I'm going to move the plastic and I'm going to take the clay and all I'm doing is hanging it and then pulling it toward myself. And you're essentially like stretching it by doing this. So I'm throwing a slab right now. Um, so I'm just throwing it a small distance towards myself. Okay. And then I'm going to put it back if I... I'm going to do that a few times to stretch it out. If, I'm, if you're finding the rolling to be a bit difficult, you might stretch the clay out a little bit. Put your sticks back up and then go back and check your template. As I can see, this is way longer than I need it to be. So I'm just going to cut it a little bit. And then I'm going to go back to rolling because it's still too thick. You want it nice and even. I am standing while I do this as well. You can get a lot more pressure when you're standing versus if you were sitting down. So I recommend that you stand and you try to apply nice even pressure on your rolling pin. And identify any areas that it feels like it's a little bit thicker than other spots. This is much trickier to do um, using this small rolling pin versus a regular rolling pin. Obviously, you're going to get a little bit more pressure and power out of a larger rolling pin. So if you do have something larger, you might find that helpful. But this, this will work. It's just going to take a little bit more muscle. Okay, so I have um, gone over this quite a bit more. One thing I found helpful was kind of um, going back and forth over my sections, kind of going back and forth with a lot of pressure to make sure they rolled out because it does take a, a, a lot more muscle to kind of use a small rolling pin versus a larger rolling pin. So once I have double checked my clay and really made sure that my roller is hitting the wooden paint sticks. I'm then going to go through with my wooden skewer, or if you have a plastic knife or a metal knife, you could use that as well. And I'm going to hold. One thing that you might find helpful is using the wooden stick to help you. And I'm going to hold, put my template up, and then hold that 
wooden stick against the template. Make sure it's nice and even. And this is going to ensure that you get a nice straight edge. I'm going to pull that clay off. So you do not need the wooden paint sticks anymore. If you cut and you notice, oh, this is really thick in one spot, you can always go back and put the paint sticks down again and re-roll it out a little bit more. So I'm using this all the way around to assist me in getting a nice clean line. The next thing that I'm going to want to do is find a board or a flat surface to place this on. So I'm in my classroom and I have wooden boards, but many of you may not have something like this available to you. So you may want to have a piece of cardboard from like an Amazon box or even the back of a cereal box. Um, something that is firm and flat is best. So a plate might not be the best because it has, you know, kind of raised edges. Um, it's nice to have some newspaper if you can to put down underneath it or even saran wrap so it doesn't stick to whatever surface you are laying it on. Although in general, if you're laying it on cardboard, it shouldn't stick. So I'm going to put my newspaper down. And then what I'm going to do is take my very carefully peel my template off. Oop, a little bit of it sticking, but that's okay. And then I can look at my edge and make sure that it looks nice and even. And as you can see, it's a nice, um, even consistency throughout. It's about the thickness of my pinky. And then I'm going to very carefully move this to my board. I don't want to stretch it out. Okay. After this, I am going to go and roll out the piece for my base. You are making two mugs. I would do one mug at a time because by the time you finish putting together your first mug, this might dry out. So I recommend, you know, one mug at a time. The other thing that you can do is take a little bit of saran wrap and um, use this to help cover up your pieces. So I'm going to take a little bit of saran wrap. So if you're stacking pieces together, so let's say I'm rolling out my base, if I'm going to lay it on here to, to kind of dry out a little bit, I'm going to put some saran wrap down on my first piece and then lay my second piece that I roll out here. You're also going to want to thoroughly cover these, especially if you're not using them right away because they will dry out quickly. They're thin. So I'm going to take my trash bag and store the entire thing in probably two trash bags to really make sure that this does not dry out. And eventually, we will be making a mug like this, although yours is going to be out of the red clay. As you can see, I added some texture to this. You certainly could add some texture to yours later. Um, this is about, again, the thickness that we're going for. We will be adding a handle. Um, certainly, if you want to make something that is more sculptural or has some kind of creative components, here's an example of a tree mug. So you could add um, some elements coming off of the piece. You know, they have this nice creative handle here and some beautiful carving in the piece. Slabs can also be used to make something that is not a cylindrical shape. So you certainly could use slabs to make something um, like this sculptural purse, right? That is made with um, more geometric sort of pieces, right? Um, but you do need to have a template for that. So these are just a few examples of what is possible with slabs.